Hi, I'm Rick Emmett from Triumph, and we're here to talk a little bit about uh, lead guitar soloing, which is maybe a bit of a lost art. Certainly there's not as many records that have guitar solos as there used to be. Um, Keith Moon once said that uh, a good concert set was start with a bang, end with a bang, and then everything in the middle doesn't matter. <laughs> and so, you know, a, a guitar solo can kind of sort of be like that too. It really should have a good starting note. And guys that I played in bands with would always say, you know, when the solo comes, like really make a nice definitive statement. And so w whenever I start, I want to have a note that has a lot of expression to it. And one of the things that I learned early on was a, a, a thing about overbending. So a, a bend is always a good thing to start with. So if I was playing in, in key of E and I started a solo with this note, like that nice bent note. But I warm it up with vibrato after I do it because it gives it character, it gives it personality. It's not just boring. Now it starts to sing a little bit. That vibrato, that laughing kind of quality, that's the thing that sort of makes the notes jump out when you start. But the overbend is instead of just, I might go like, uh, So instead of bending just one tone, I'm bending a couple. That's a minor third. And I'm sorry I make faces, but I can't help it. That's what guitar players do. When you play this note, you have to make this face. It's just in the rule book. Once you're into a solo, the, the next thing you're trying to do is just kind of capture an emotional feeling of the song. So. For myself, I might pay attention to what the melody was that the singer was singing, uh, what maybe the main theme of the song was, and that I wouldn't want to necessarily play it just exact. I would look to, it's like theme and variations. You, you sort of figure out a way to give it a little bit of variety or color. Then if I was trying to develop the solo, then I would think, okay, so now I, I'm supposed to maybe show off some chops or or get a little busier, uh, ratchet up the energy that's going on. So now I might employ techniques like pull-offs to get more notes in shorter spaces of time. Use kind of scales to build upon. That kind of stuff. And that would create the energy. And now you're getting towards the ending. So to go back to the Keith Moon thing, you know, you start with something good and you end with something good. You look for something that... Uh, you know, caps the solo for the end. So you might, I don't know, uh, I, I might use a two-string bend. It has a real truck brakes kind of, whoa, kind of sound to it. That works. You know, there's other ones. Something like that. I think the mistake that a lot of guitar players make with solos is they think, oh, I have to, you know, show how great I am right from the beginning, and I have to play really fast. It's not his speed that makes you know Eddie Van Halen a great guitar player. It's the fact that his feel is so great and and his his ability to to hit the right notes in the right places. So, you know, um, there are easy things to do to make lots of notes happen. Like uh, you can play uh, arpeggios that pull off to open C, and that's it gives energy without necessarily being overly crazy busy as soon as i start running double picked kind of and that it's these are flurries of notes flurries of notes shouldn't exist as the main statement they should only exist to get you from one place to the other there's uh, guys that teach jazz guitar say you know if you get yourself paint yourself into a corner you're only ever one fret away from solving your problem <laughs> because that's kind of how music works and in uh, rock guitar for rock soloing one of the easy ways to be able to, if you paint yourself into a corner, there's little tricks that you can use, and one of them would be a pick slide. You know, so your fingers are getting tired because you've been wanking away for so long that oh my God, you you know you're you're out of ideas and your hand is sore. So you do one of these things where you use the edge of the pick and you just kind of it's a great sound. And I start fast so I get high pitch and then I slow down. And you, you've heard, you know, tons of guitar players do it, but it's a kind of a cool thing to do. You can just...
create sound effects. You know, another one is uh, little slide offs and things like there's things where you, you just give it a. So I'm playing a blues kind of. Little slides, they're like glissandos. And, you know, um, I'm also doing a thing there where I'm doing edge of pick harmonics. So instead of a note just being I'm, all along a, a string's length, there are places where you can pick it where you, they're like they're harmonic nodes. So if the edge of the pick hits in a place where Billy Gibbons of ZZ Top was a guy that does a lot of that, and uh, Brian May of Queen uses a coin to play, and so he uses the. That was a good one. You can hear how there's like two octaves up. There's something there that uh, dogs are beginning to bark all over the neighborhood. I, I miss guitar solos, uh, but I always liked it when songs had solos because solos function in the same way that a bridge functions in a song. It gives you a vacation from the song a little bit. And the solo to me was like this, this second vacation that would happen in a tune, and I really liked them. But we don't get them as, as much. Um, but, you know, I think fashion is kind of like a, a wheel or, or maybe like the pendulum of a clock, you know. It goes out of fashion, it'll come back, you know. You can't stop people that play like David Gilmore and Alex Lifeson and Billy Gibbons and, you know, those kind of guys are going to find ways to reach the public and the public's going to go, wow, that's a cool guitar player. <laughs>